welcome back to my channel. It's Toby from Metasurf and today let's talk about catching unbroken waves. the art of timing and positioning yourself in the water to be able to catch a wave before it breaks. Understand the beach and the waves where you are about to surf. You can start reading the waves already during your warm-up. Observe the waves they come in and try to find out when the set comes and where it breaks first. The part of the wave where it breaks first, we call it the peak. And there, or at this moment, the wave has the most power. The part left and right of the peak is called the shoulder. The shoulder of the wave is less powerful and breaks later. The further you sit on the left or on the right side of the peak, the more you sit on the shoulder shoulder has less power and it's much harder for you to catch a wave. By the way, the person or the surfer who is closest to the peak has always priority. Priority means he is allowed to catch the wave and surf it. There are many waves coming to the beach, but only one surfer for one wave. Try always to look first if there is someone in a better position before you start to paddle for the wave. Before we talk about where the waves come from, you have to understand that not every wave which is coming to the beach is the same. There is always a time where the waves are smaller and a time when the bigger waves arrive on the beach. The bigger waves, we call them the set. The set waves are the waves we want to surf. The smaller waves we just use to get out to the lineup or to maybe change our position in the water to be in a better position for the next set. A very important information for you is how much time is passing by from one set to the next set. This will help you to either get out to the lineup because you will know how much time you roughly have or you can position yourself in the water better because you don't get surprised by the set. Why do waves break where we surf them anyway? What do you think? Because of the wind at the beach? Or is it because of the beach itself? Or maybe because of the sun? For that, let's see first where the waves come from. Waves are created thousands of miles or kilometers away. The strong winds in this area blow onto the surface of the water and into the water as well. The stronger the winds are, the deeper they will reach into the water and the more waves they will create as well on the surface. Similar like when you try to blow air into a bathtub which is filled with water. The stronger you blow, the deeper you blow into the water or you bend the surface because the winds or in this case your breath is transporting energy into the water. So you will have waves on the top of the surface and waves or energy underwater and the water which is traveling far below the surface of the sea we call it groundswell now all those waves in the groundswell they start their journey all the way over the ocean and while they are traveling they are picking up more and more energy and the surface with all those messy little waves gets more and more sorted the more distance those waves travel we call those traveling waves swell. On some days with a good swell period and you stand on the beach, you look out to the horizon, you can see lines appearing on the, on the surface. But how is it possible that we can surf those swell lines? Like I said earlier, the swell is not just on the surface. You also have waves and a depth. The closer the swell travels towards a land or an island, the more shallow the water gets around this mass of land. 
sometimes because of sandbanks, what we call beach breaks, but also sometimes because of constellations of rocks, what we call a reef break. Sooner or later, the swell hits this shallow area close to the land. What happens is, the bottom of the sea creates friction, which slows the lower part of the water down, but the top part of the water is still keeping the same speed. And since the water gets more and more shallow, the friction gets more and more as well, until finally the top part is much faster than the bottom part and the wave starts to collapse. Now you know that the waves break because of the bottom of the sea and the friction it creates. Use the information about the beach and the tide to find a good position for yourself to catch a wave before it breaks. So if you want to catch the wave before it breaks, you have to position yourself behind the spot where the wave breaks. I would say roughly three to five meters. Remember when you wait for waves to sit with your chest towards the horizon where the waves are coming from so you can see also a little bit more to the left and a little bit more to the right where the waves come in so you can react earlier and get into a better position. Never sit on your board with your back towards the horizon. Where you position yourself in the water depends also of course on the board you're surfing. In case you surf a bigger board you can position yourself a little bit further out because your bigger board has more volume so it is easier to get the board on a speed in case you surf on a short board, you don't want to sit too far out because otherwise the wave is not steep enough for you and the board to catch it. But no matter which board you surf, don't sit at the spot where the wave breaks. To some students it happens they paddle towards the impact zone and they will get the wave right in their neck. Most of the time they don't even look over their shoulder, so they have no idea what and why and when something is happening. Since they don't look over the shoulder back, they don't have any information of the wave or about the shape of the wave. So they just paddle blind into the wave and it's a little bit like poker. Either you're lucky or you're unlucky to catch this wave. Don't stop paddling too early. Believe it or not, this is one of the most common mistakes. Catching an unbroken wave is much more difficult than catching whitewater waves, for example. You will have to paddle much harder and longer. When a whitewater wave hits you, the impact is quite rough, or at least you notice a stronger push. The push of a green wave is more like a lift, which is increasing in speed and angle the more you paddle with it. Also remember your power paddling. Your last three most powerful strokes. Use your head. When your board is about to enter the wave and you are about to do your last three power strokes, look already where you want to go. Left or right. For sure you don't want to go straight down the line on a green wave. But when you look where you want to go, the chance is much higher that after the pop-up you stay on the wall of the wave and you have a much longer surf with more speed. Spend as much time on the beach or on your surf spot as possible and read the waves and the water. The better you can read waves, the easier it will be for you to predict where the wave will break and the better you will choose your position in the water. All right, let's summon up. Try to understand where the wave breaks already before you enter the water. Choose a position in the water which is close to the peak. Position yourself with a chest towards the horizon or in other words where the waves are coming from. Wait for the set. Pick a wave, start to paddle and try to match the speed of your surfboard with the speed of the wave by looking over your shoulder. When the wave is about to lift you up, remember your power strokes. And when your nose is about to drop or the board has the same speed like the wave, pop up. 
look where you want to go, left or right, to be able to surf along the face of the wave. Catch the wave always as early as possible because the drop is not that steep as you can see in a little picture I painted in the sand. A less steeper drop means you have more time to pop up and it doesn't look so scary. And remember who has priority, always the person closer to the peak.